Hi there. Glorious weather. Um, on a Friday afternoon or a Monday morning, I always do a weekly review and then a, a weekly plan. So what's gone on before and what's going on ahead. And it always involves a walk. And today I thought I'd bring you with me. So um, last week we got to um, the conclusion that owning one or two houses um, perhaps wasn't worth it and you need to push through to 5, 10, 15 properties. We've got a lot, a lot of comments. So what I want to do is make these weekly updates. Before I get into the weekly um, up update proper, I want to get on with um, you know, the idea of inspiring a few more landlords there to, to build their portfolios and, and breaking down some, some common myths, concept, uh, misconceptions and um, getting people to push through and actually really, really do this. So a couple of things that uh, I want to cover off. Um, the first one is the idea, and we touched on it last week, um, that, that owning more properties is more hassle. It just isn't. Uh, done the right way, owning more properties can get easier and easier. Uh, there's definitely a, a mental block in lots of people's minds that, uh, you know, so some people not, some people not, you know, but uh, can, I, can I own 5, 10, 15, 20 properties? I'm here to categorically say that uh, I've ne never met anybody that can't, you know. If you say you can, you can, and uh, let's, let's get on with doing that. Um, I also want to give you a bit of realism. So uh, this isn't this isn't uh, easy. It's quite simple, but it's not easy. Um, there's things you're going to have to contend with and deal with and push through to make the most of this. And I want to give you a little bit of a, a food for thought. I know this has kind of sustained me, and it took me a while to properly sort of articulate it. I've come. I, I came up with a, this was you know, maybe ten years ago. I came up with a little sort of um, not not quite a speech, but you know a, 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 a a little saying and, a, and a, a story that kind of, to me, resonates. And it, you know, it was like, yeah, that works, and that's why this works and how it's working. Um, and hopefully, that when it's when it, when things are a bit tough, it'll give you um, an ambition and a focus, and you'll be looking and saying, yeah, I can do this, and this is where I'm heading, and and, and this is how and why and why it all makes sense. So I'll start off with this one fact, and um, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is. Uh, we talk a lot about it, breathing room and headspace and um, getting getting things so that uh, you can um, yeah, have, have the life that you want and, and, and how, whatever that means to whoever, whoever's watching, you know, it means different things to different people. Um, but the basics are this, uh, I'll tell you this just as a, as a fact, so to be in the top 5% owners in the UK, you need to earn £80,000. So I know that some people will be listening will be, uh, that's, a, that's a huge amount of money. Some people will be, yeah, that's a doable amount of money. Some people, I'll, I'll surpass that you know, years ago or whatever it is. I'm not saying for that reason. Um, the reason is it's just a fact. Once you know that fact, it makes sense that 95% um, of the economy, if you like, or 95% of life is geared towards 95% of people. And that has to fit in between somewhere between zero and 80,000 pounds, doesn't it? Yeah, if 80,000 pounds is the top 5% earners, stands to reason that um, everything can be lived on within that. 95% can be lived on within within that. Put put that into sort of real terms. A um, And I always picked, you can do it with anything, you literally do it with anything, but I always pick a sandwich, a car and a house, just because I used to be in the sandwich business and, and uh, you know, we're in the housing business and a car is a big ticket item and it's, it's easy to uh, to think about. You could do it with a pair of jeans. You could do it with literally anything. You think about the cheapest sandwich you can buy in for lunch, you know? Um, and then think about the most expensive sandwich you can buy for lunch. Uh, I happen to know, just because I was in the business, that a, the cheapest sandwich probably, you know, what, £1.50 from Boots, you can get an egg mayonnaise sandwich. Go into the fanciest um, uh, pub in town, a uh, gastro pub, what would you expect to spend on the most expensive sandwich? Would it be 15 quid? And you've got to be realistic here. It's not It's not like, I know I know for a fact that also the, the most expensive sandwich went for something like over £3,000 and it was, you know, had all sorts of weird and wonderful things in it and it was for charity. So we're not talking about weird things. You can always find an exception. I mean, really practically in day-to-day -day life, the cheapest sandwich, the most expensive sandwich, roughly one's 10 times the other. If you do the same thing with a car, you know, a cheapest car, eight grand most expensive car and again you can spend millions on a car i know you can um but i mean a car for getting around in a to b from the same let's say from the same group of manufacturers we all know that you know cars are all made by the same people these days let's take i don't know the cheapest um skoda you can buy and the most expensive audi you can buy they're basically the same car aren't they but one could be 
um, ten times the other. The same with the house. You know, the cheapest three-bedroom house in this area and the cheapest three-bedroom, most, most expensive three-bedroom house in that area, you will find they are ten times one. One is ten times the other, almost always. Um, start thinking about it, you know, and um, you think, yeah, so what? Yeah, so what? And uh, the reason I'm telling you that story is as soon as you kind of... Oh, I'm just realised I'm... It's giving me a sun warning. Oh, there's too much sun. That's a problem to have in the UK, isn't it? Um, yeah, as soon as you realise that, you realise that everybody else is living in that. If you can get just one or two or three percent ahead of everybody else, you've got choices then. You know, you can um, you can live a 60% lifestyle whilst being in the 85 or 95 or 100 percent, and that will definitely um, uh, yeah. In, 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 increase things as well or you can choose to live the you know the 95 percent lifestyle as soon as you, as soon as you want and, you know, that's a personal choice that's not the, the message i'm making the message is if you get into that um just slightly above um what you need there's very little you can spend your money on and after that point you've got this headroom this relaxing space where you can make the choices um personally i, I choose to reinvest as much as i can and i'm and i'm growing it because that's what i want to do and i enjoy doing it um and you know maybe there's a hybrid in between you know i wouldn't suggest maybe splurging all of it all at once but you do a little bit here and a little, you, know, you you grow a bit you enjoy it a bit you grow a bit more you enjoy it a little bit um but definitely as soon as you get above where 95 percent of the uk's population is there's very little once you food you, you you fed yourself you've got somewhere to live and you can drive around in the car all the rest of your life costs are going to be within that band of course they are you know that's the way that life is geared up so if you can get just a little bit ahead you can get a lot ahead and that's the message um so that's why i'm saying it's worthwhile doing you know building this property portfolio um it's one building block at a time but it will get you there and when you get there it will feel quite special and you know you do literally pop out the other end maybe and think i did it um, there's something else that we need to explore and it's the idea of how you make your money you know there, there, there might be people listening who say yeah I surpassed that £80,000 a year a long time ago and I get paid that by a job and uh, yeah, great but it's very definitely how you make it as well if you can be in that position in life but not have to go to work and work really hard on it you'll feel a lot lot different about it and um you might you might choose to go and do a job that you really enjoy doing. Maybe you're already in a job that you really enjoy doing. Yeah. Again, it's not a comment on that. Um, it's the two things. It's the one, make sure you get there. Make sure you um, get into that 5%. That's my ambition for all of our landlords. And secondly, really choose how you do it once you're there. Make sure you've got that choice. Um, you know, all very well being there, but if you've got to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and do uh, yeah, another 14 hour day, is it really worth it? So, that's my little ramble. A ramble on a ramble, and that was the thing. So, today's update. I've got the KPI sheet with me. I'll always bring a notebook. Um, finding properties. So, finding properties. The market is coming alive again. We sale agreed three properties last week. Uh, now, I've said it a lot in the last few weeks. We think there's a lot of opportunities coming our way. There's one sort of takeaway from this update here. Um, is if, if you're in the... Um, hopefully, there's more than one takeaway, but... Um, it's, it's, to, it's to get liquid, uh, yeah, get ready, get, get, a, get a war chest. I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, but I still think you need to be, um, get, get liquid, get ready. Um, it's not that properties are particularly getting much cheaper, it's just that we're finding more of the cheap ones, and that sounds a bit of a contradiction. Um, or if you think it through a little bit more, but you think, well, what is actually happening to the market? But what we think is happening in the market is, um, well, there are, there are some, it's not that the market's softening, but we're finding soft spots that might not be apparent. And it's probably because of the lockdown period, you know, it's pent up, um, it's not demand, it's, it's pent up, people, pent up sellers, they're, they're wanting to sell. So if the average property takes between 8 and 12 weeks to convey, we aim to do ours in 21 days. Um, if you can still wait 12 weeks, I don't think much has changed for you. Um, however, if you need this property to go through uh, quickly, um, you you need that cash in a month or less, then we're your buyers. And there's some opportunities there. We're not seeing much happening at the other end, on the end valuations, which is great news for us at the moment. So my one piece of advice there is get as liquid as possible and um, 
yeah, re, re, refinance any properties that you've uh, that you've got to refinance and, and you know, get 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 ready, get a war chest ready. When it comes to fixing properties, um, it's still troublesome, but it's not worrisome. And what we mean by that is suppliers are interrupted, builders are having multiple little niggly issues to deal with. Uh, that's troublesome, but it's not worrisome because um, it's all to be expected. Honestly, we we yeah. There's nothing serious in there. It's all, there's a solution to everything. We simply added two weeks to the anticipated renovations timeline, and we hope to reverse that as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, when it comes to actually fixing up properties, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, when it comes to renting, we're still renting out lots of properties. There's strong demand. Um, however, and again, this is as predicted. Um, We've been renting properties throughout the lockdown and they've all gone well. Um, but we, we do know that there are somewhere, you know, somebody's been maybe been in lockdown or, or so, something's happened that uh, meant that that one got stuck. It's still there and we need to get on with getting those gone now. Uh, some of the older HMO rooms, they, they're all having their uh, revamp and redecorate where, where, where landlords have authorised it. Uh, they're having that now and that's going to start helping them and getting rid of those ones as well. Um, and that was work that couldn't happen in lockdown. We, we couldn't be doing that rent um uh, tenant turns we did we did standard ones but not those um and also there's there's a bigger number of um notices some people just left during this you know uh, particularly you know, hmo rooms I'm, I'm, I'm going back to wherever home was you know whether it was to live with parents or um some, somewhere else i don't know but uh, yeah some some of them lost their jobs or were, were, were furloughed or something um so they so they went um so yeah, the, the, there's a bit of a backlog to get stuff rented, but we're, we're definitely on with that. Uh, Camillo sorting um, through all of that right now, so he's uh, that's his priority. Um, when it comes to long-term management, there was definitely work that was put into silos. We call them work silos, um, and we are getting through that work now. If um, yeah, I can see, we're literally ninety percent through it, so it's it's almost almost back to normal there. Um, I'm going to mention it again just because it was a standout figure. Um, we, we have a we, we're tracking a new KPI, which was the amount of money that's promised to us uh, for, from tenants who are actually in arrears, but due to COVID. So the typical situation would be, uh, I've been furloughed, I can only pay 80% of my rent, um, but I promise to pay 80% of the rent and then catch up. So what we're tracking is, if, if there's been an issue uh, and people are promised to pay it, are they actually doing it? And the figure on uh, Friday is zero pounds, as in every single person that's promised it has paid it. Now I'm not saying that's uh, you know, hundred percent of uh, uh, rent due collected. It's a hundred percent of anything that's been agreed collected. One hundred percent. I can tell you now as well that our actual total arrears are just 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 over seven thousand pounds. There's not many letting agencies that would, that would tell you their exact arrears figure, but I'm very proud of it. Um, seven thousand pounds put in a context of. Um, but I tell you now, it's it's uh, two point. 2.4% there is, uh, in, including all COVID issues. So uh, appreciate, you know, if, if that is somebody that owes you £500, it's you that owes £500. But as a, as a company, we are, I wouldn't just say on top of it, it's uh, probably a standout achievement throughout this lockout, lockdown period. Um, yeah, uh, and the, the team have done exceptionally well to, uh, to keep that income flowing in. So that, that's good news. That's the end of the update for today. Hopefully, um, yeah, we've inspired somebody to uh, just just one person to go for it and uh, build the property empire to that five, ten, fifteen, twenty properties. And that's what we're all about at the moment. So uh, let's keep shooting for that, and I'll see you next week.